Sheikh Ali al-Tantawi, rahimahullah, he has written an article which Mawlana Abu al-Hassan Ali al-Nadwi, rahmatullahi alayhi, included in his Mukhtarat, a book that he authored on Arabic literature. The article that Sheikh Ali al-Tantawi wrote is titled Al-Fidrus al-Islami fi Qabrati Asia. The Islamic paradise, Islamic paradise in the Indian subcontinent. So he mentions briefly, after he was fortunate enough to travel to India, the history of India, how Islam came to India. I don't want to go into the details of that. So Shaykh Ali al-Tintawi rahmatullahi mentions that when Islam came to India, and it spread far and wide, different kings came and they ruled. There was an era when many of the kings, they would have a sheikh. And they would be so closely attached to that sheikh that they would follow each and every instruction of that sheikh. So he mentions that not only did they rule, not only did they rule the people, they ruled the hearts of people. Because these kings knew how to spend the time. So it is mentioned about Shams Sultan, Shamsuddin al Tamash, Rahimahullah, that he would serve the Shaykh of his time, Khaja Bhakti al Ta'ati, Rahimahullah. He would serve him, he would go to him, attend to his needs, and despite being a king, until the Shaykh would not permit him to enter, he would wait outside. And when he would go to his court, in front of him, he would visit himself so much because of the spirituality that Allah blessed that Shaykh with, that he would weep, weep profusely. But look at his spiritual condition. It is said that Khaja Bhakti al rahimahullah, when he was close to his death, he left a wasiyah, bequest, and he said that that person should lead my janazah salah who possesses three qualities. One is that he should not never, never have missed the takbir ayul and salah. He should always have been present from the very first moment the Imam says, Allahu Akbar. Second, he should not have gazed at a non-mahram woman. His gaze should not have fallen upon a non-mahram woman from the moment that he became mature. And thirdly, he would not have ever missed the four rakat sunnat ghair mu'akkada of asr. Look at these conditions. Probably all of us would fail in that. When he left this wasiyah, and he died, and his janazah was brought forward, people were waiting because it was announced that the sheikh has left this, these instructions. So they waited for one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. When no one came forward, finally the sultan of his time, Sultan Shamsuddin al tamash he came forward and led the janazah salam. And he said to the people, that if my sheikh did not disclose this secret of mine, no one would have known of this. But the sheikh wanted to show the people the status of this king of the time. That look at his spirituality, look at his connection with Allah, how he spent his time in the company of the sheikh and in his guidance, that he reached such a height, that he never misused his eyes, he never missed his takbir ayula in salah, he never missed the four rakah sunnati mughayr muqattada of asr salah. <coughs> He mentions another king, mentions about Alim Gir Aurang Zayr Rahmatullah Ali, our Honorable Shaykh with Allah just mentioned his name before the Zuhar Salah. So when he became king, when he became king prior to his becoming king, there was much turmoil in India. His great grandfather Akbar, he had announced and declared a new religion by the name of Dina Ilahi, where he wanted to combine all the religions. And from among the many causes of this and reasons, one reason that is mentioned is that he fell in love with a female from the opposite faith. And in order to pave the way for himself to marry her, this is what he decided to do. That he brought about a revolution and an entire new being in order for his act of marrying this female could be acceptable by everyone. And the most misfortunate thing is that the people who assisted him were scholars, great scholars of their time. Great scholars of their time. So despite having knowledge, these people were at the door of the Amir, of the king. And they paved the way for him. 
And it was the shaykh of his time, Maulana Ahmed al-Sarhindi, Mujadid al-Fatani, rahmatullahi alayhi, who was the one who once again revived the deen. And later on, in the same king's progeny, his son comes, Jahangir after him, Shah Jaha after whom comes, Alamgir Oran Zayr, rahmatullahi alayhi. So about him, it is mentioned that the son of Shaykh Ahmed al-Sarhindi, rahmatullahi alayhi, Shaykh Muhammad Ma'asum al Hindi rahmatullahi alayhi, this young boy, he was put in the care of the Shaykh. So he did his tarbiyah. So not only was his tarbiyah an upbringing then, as a king, learning about warfare, about military and how to administer, he was also taught more or less the Darsa Nivam. And he learned the Qur'an, Hadith, and he became a scholar. Not only that, spiritually he also benefited from Shaykh Muhammad Ma'asum al-Sarhindi rahmatullahi alayhi. And the things that he achieved is beyond belief. Because the point that I want to make is one, that these people, whatever they achieved, they achieved because of their connection with the Shaykh. And secondly, because of the time that they spent correctly. So Shaykh Ali al-Tantari rahmatullahi alayhi lists to the end of the article all the achievements of this king. So he says that Alamgir Aurangzeb rahmatullahi during his kingdom, from among the things that he achieved, one was that from Afghanistan all the way to India, there was a very long path, which still exists today, probably one of the longest roads. It would take someone traveling that route three months to cover. Yet, look at his administrative mind. This king, he put upon the path on both sides trees to shade people when they would travel. Not only did he do that, he is from among those who placed at intervals resting places. Resting places and masjids. So that travelers, they are not inconvenienced, they can pray salah, they can also rest. Not only that, he is from among those who made clinics, from among those who made hospitals for the insane. He did all this. Not only that, he says, he was the judge of his time. He had in his kingdom many judges. But very important <coughs> court cases he himself would deal with as a judge. So he would go, sit in the court, and listen to the case, and give his verdict. He says from all his extraordinary feats, one feat that he achieved, which he says probably no one has, is that he's from among the first people who, from the Islamic treasury, appointed a sum for the ulama that when they would do their service of deen, they would not have to spread their hands in front of people, the state would fund them. So an alim who would be teaching, who would be writing, who would be authoring, provided that he provides proof of what he's done, his income and salary would come from the king and from his treasury. Not only that, because of the knowledge that Allah had given him, he commissioned a group of ulama to write fatawa, Islamic verdict, on matters related to one's day-to-day life, which was used as the law of the time. So the law that was passed and people that were governed by it was from a book that he commissioned, which even till today the muftis use as fatawa alam giriya Ya fatawa hindiya even today, a mufti would refer to his work in order to give a correct verdict upon deen and a matter of Islam. Further saying, not only that, he also had books in the Persian language on hadith, he compiled books, he wrote translations, he was an adib, so he wrote many books and translations. He said, after becoming a king, he became half of the Qur'an. His sustenance was not that he would take a sum from the treasury, rather he would write the Qur'an himself and sell, and whatever he would earn from selling the Qur'an, that is what he would survive on. He says that he would go far and wide in his kingdom. He's from among those who ruled the entire India. So he would go far and wide, but would make, a, would make sure that on Friday he was, he was there in Delhi, in the Jami Masjid, to pray Salah. He would fast in time until Ramadan. Not only that, Monday, Thursdays and Fridays continuously he would fast. He would sit the ten days at the of Ramadan. So this is a king. 
So Shaykh Ali ibn Tazi rahmatullah alayhi says, how did he achieve all this? How did he achieve all this? Because of him managing his time. He had time for himself, for his family, for administration, for doing all these things. And that is what a shaykh teaches you. That is what a shaykh teaches. That is what Hazrat Hakim Akhtar Rahmatullahi would say. Kisi ahadi lilki sohbat jumili kisi ko akhtar usse aagaya hi jina usse aagaya hi marna. But if someone truly was blessed with the sohbat and company of the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows how to live, he knows how to die. He knows how to live, he knows how to die. So Shaykh Ali Atim Tami concludes by saying that he ruled 50 years over India. وَكَانَ أَعْذَنَ مُلُوكِ الدُّنْيَا فِي عَسْرِهِ And he was from among the greatest kings of his time. وَكَانَتْ بِيَدِهِ خَزَائِنُ الْأَرْضِ That in his hands were the treasures of the earth. وَكَانَتْ بِيَدِهِ خَزَائِنُ الْكُنُوزِ مَفَاتِهُ الْكُنُوزِ He had the keys to the treasures. But how did he live his life? وَكَانَ يَعِيشُ عَيْشَ الزُّهْدِ وَالْفَطْرِ He lived a life of abstinence and poverty. I read in one place that during his reign, he reigned from 1658 to approximately 1707. So in 1690, some historians, they researched and they said the annual revenue, the annual revenue of his kingdom at that time was $495 million. $495 million at that time, 1690. Why? Because of his just ruling. And he's further says that his economy was worth at that time 90 billion dollars. Why? Because of him understanding his value, the purpose of his life, attaching himself to a sheikh, following his guidance and valuing his time. And he further concludes by saying that وَمَا مَدَّ يَدَهُ وَعَيْنَهُ إِلَىٰ حَرَامٍ That he never raised his eyes or his hands towards anything haram. وَلَا أَدْخَلَهُ فِي بَطْنِهِ He never let any haram enter his stomach. وَلَا أَشَّتَ لَهُ إِزَارًا That he never opened his lower garments for haram. Meaning he had women at his disposal. But he never engaged in any haram. And he spent his life when he would fast, breaking his fast upon a few bread, and that would also be earned from the mushaf that he would write. So that is how he lived. So why were these people so successful? Once again, because of the attachment to a share and doing their tazkiya and realizing how we are to spend our lives. So whether you are a king or you are not a king. As our Honorable Shaykh Hafidahullah mentions, that Jigar Murad Abadi Rahmatullahi would say that Mira Kamal Ish is bas itna hai Jigar wo mujh pe chha gaye me zamani pe chha gaye. That my Kamal Ish, my Excellence of love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala overpowered me, He entered my heart, and I overpowered the entire world. So even today, if we want that same success without treading this path, my brothers, it is not possible. So let us make sure that this opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, we value that. And we don't go here feeling despondent. That this is too hard. No, everything is within our capability. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever He commands us to do, it is within our capacity and capability. Everyone can become the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Honorable Shaykh with Allah mentions. And it is the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ala inna awliya Allah, la khawfun alihim wa la hum yahzanun. That neither do they grieve, neither do they fear. 